This uh, example here is another example for the product rule. Uh, but this time we have the product of two trig functions, tan and secant. Right? So we'll uh, quick review here of the product rule. Product rule says, right? Product rule for a derivative says, give me the derivative of the first uh, part. We'll call this first part f, and we'll call the second part over here g, right? So give me the derivative of f, and then uh, we're going to multiply that by g, and add to that f times g prime. Okay, so if this tangent here is going to be our f, and if secant is going to be our g, then we can find the first derivative. All right, so here goes. R prime is going to be equal to. All right, so give me the derivative of tangent, and this is something you have to know or memorize or look up somewhere on a table. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. All right, so secant squared of theta times g, right, so it's f prime g, so times g, which is just secant theta, all right, plus, now give me the f function, which is, or in our case, just tangent of theta, times g prime, all right, but g prime, in our case, is the derivative of secant, and the derivative of secant is secant itself times tangent of theta. All right, so let me clean this up just a little bit more here. You can see that, look, I've got, for this term here, I've got three of these secants, right? I've got secant squared times secant. I really have secant cubed theta. And over here, this is not a, this is not a distributive property. It's just, it's just this stuff times this stuff times this stuff. So, you know, it, this is, there's no addition or subtraction going on here. This is not distributive property, okay? So I hope you see that over here I've got two tangents, or tangent squared, and I've got a secant theta. Okay, well, you could stop right there. You could say, look, there's our answer. That's probably as far as we can go. And if you want to get fancy and you want to take a secant out, I guess, of these two terms, you can do that. So let me show you that other option of writing our answer. You can take a secant theta out of both of these terms. So leaving you, if you took a secant out of this one, leaving you with secant squared theta. And if you took a secant out of this last term here, you'd simply be left with tangent squared theta. Okay, so I guess both of these are equivalent answers. Now, if this is a multiple choice question, say on my math lab, and you're looking to see you know, which of these is the answers, but you don't see that answer, well, here's an alternative way of writing our answer. Okay, here's another, another method in which you can come up with our answer here. Let me put a box around this, because this is really our answer. But let's see, if there's another way we could we could come up with this. Um, well, do you know, right, you should remember, that secant is simply just the reciprocal of cosine, right? So I'm going to use it here, and I'm going to use it here as well. And tangent is really the ratio of sine over cosine. So I'm going to show this. Well, maybe I can squeeze it here on this same paper here. So instead of writing secant out, secant theta out front, how about we write it as 1 over cosine theta? Okay, we can do that. And instead of writing secant squared theta, I'm going to write that over 1 as, as 1 over cosine squared theta. Right? It's just the reciprocal, that's all. And tangent squared theta is simply the ratio of sine squared over cosine squared. All right, so that's not so bad either. Okay, now what's interesting about this is that look, inside this parentheses here, I've got two fractions and the denominators are already the same, right? Same denominator. So how about instead of writing them as two separate fractions, how about we write them as one fraction? Okay, so inside the parentheses, I'm going to write this as one plus sine squared theta all over my common denominator of cosine squared theta. I can do that, right? And then I'm going to do one more algebra trick, and that is, let's take this cosine squared theta that I have inside the parentheses here. Let's take this guy, and let's move it outside of the parentheses. In other words, right, when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across, right? You multiply straight across. So I'm just going to multiply the two denominators, but I'm going to move them outside of the parentheses. So it's going to look like this. 
outside the parentheses now, I hope you see I've got 1 over cosine cubed theta, right? Because cosine theta times cosine squared theta is cosine cubed theta. And inside the parentheses, if I move that cosine squared theta out, I'm simply left with this numerator of 1 plus sine squared theta. OK, one more thing. How about we take this reciprocal, right? How about we take, rather, this 1 over cosine cubed theta, and let's just reciprocate it. So I'm just going to flip this over, and I hope you see, again, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, right? So we can write this final answer here as, right, instead of 1 over cosine cubed theta, I'm going to write it as secant cubed theta times my parentheses of 1 plus sine squared theta. There we go. So I've got another form of the exact same answer. Okay, so I'm putting my answers in a box here. All right, putting my answers in a box here. This answer is the same as that answer right there, just in a slightly different form. Hope that helps.